to this fourth and final uh, class installment, this course installment of a four video course on your practice of prayer. We wouldn't say the practice of prayer, it's really actually your practice of prayer. What does it look like for you to develop healthy patterns of prayer that you might become a fully flourishing, prayerful person. Our first video, we dove into the, the, the foundation of the whole thing, which was that God is up to something in your life, that the essence of prayer is exactly that, that God desires a connection with you. It's not actually rooted in whether or not you can do it or feel like you can do it. God desires connection with the ones God made. It's active and alive already in your life. Can you pay attention to that first? And that's where we launched. From there, we talked about experimentation. We talked about trying a few things out. You wrote some of the stuff down. You, 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 you actually talked about also things that didn't work and investigated why some of those things didn't work because the things that don't work can matter as much and be as informative as the things that do work. Like, why don't they work? The shape of your soul, the shape of your life, pray as you are as, as opposed to how you wish you were. Uh, then we talked about obstacles. And like I said, I didn't want to hang out about obstacles because it was like, eh, we can stay in the negative and it becomes about why I can't, why I can't, why I can't. I push you towards Scott Erickson's work around obstacles, and then I talked about the fact that sometimes obstacles, maybe even often, obstacles specifically in the practice of prayer aren't actually obstacles, they're more like invitations to become prayerful about things that are mundane in our lives, and to maybe change the vision that we have for ourselves about what it looks like to be a person of prayer. Maybe we have some expectations of ourselves uh, as persons of prayer that we need to shift because of the way our lives are actually shaped. Pray as you are, as opposed to the way you wish you were. This last installment is, it's really about other people. There's this, I want to call it a stigma, I want to call it kind of a, it's, it's, it's a misconception, it might even be a deception, that prayer is personal. It's not. You can do it personally. You can have a personal practice of prayer. But if prayer is what I think prayer is, it's not really personal. It's deeply and fundamentally and ultimately communal. Because if you are changed in a relationship with the divine, it'll change the way you spend your time, your money, your energies. It'll change your relationships with other people. You'll become a different human. And if you're a different human, maybe a better human, then as a better human, loving better, more richly in, uh, invested in the lives of other people, you've impacted the world around you. And if that's the case, then maybe those folks should know why it is that you've changed and are the person you are now. Prayer is not personal. You can do it personally, but prayer is communal. It's actually about everyone around you. It's about everyone you touch. It's about everyone you spend money on and spend money with, the people you spend time on and people you spend time with. It's about your kids, your wife, your husband, your dog. It's about your neighbors. Boy, is it about your neighbors. So let's talk about prayer as a communal practice. A couple ways I want to get into this. One is uh, as a way to consciously practice prayer as a communal. Uh, make a list of people that you want to be praying for regularly. This might already be a thing you do. You might regularly already like, I pray for so-and-so. Cool. Write it down. Take your journal. This, this journal. Here's my journal. Take your journal and write those names down. The way I do it is I literally, I just, I, 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 I sometimes don't, I don't even like have like specifics, but I'll like, I'll write down my mom's name. Her name is Catherine. I'll write down my mom's name. My mother-in-law is Monica. Catherine, Monica, Amy's my wife. Asa is my, is my boy. Caitlin is my girl. And I just, I just keep writing names and I just kind of submit these. Like, and I just write, I just write these names down. So make your list as in, here's one practice. Make a list of the people. Short or list. Don't make a big fat monster list. Who are the people that come to mind like off the top of your head? It might not be a super long list. And then tell them. Tell these people you're praying for them. May, and, and you might be on the other side of this screen right now freaking out like, I'm not, that's super weird. Okay, a couple things. One, it's so not because you're a person of prayer and you're in a relationship with someone. And that should just be more natural. And the only reason it's not more natural is because one, we don't do it regularly, and yes, also we've done it poorly. So here's what I'm not saying. I'm, I'm not saying to do the thing where like someone's a jerk and you think they're a jerk and you're like, hey, I'm praying for you as a way to say you're a jerk. So if that's what's in your heart, don't do that one. 
<laughs> what I'm saying is like people you you honestly love, people whose lives you're already invested in, people who know you and trust you, people you know and trust, just tell them, I'm praying for you. Make that just a practice in and of itself because it's a thing that's already happening. Invite them and fold them into that. The par second part of that is this. Talk to some people about your your journey and process about prayer. Again, this can sound terrifying. It can sound like, oh my gosh, the, to, tell, to tell people like I'm trying to revamp, I'm trying to reinvestigate and re-enliven my practice of prayer. It's so not terrifying. Well, maybe it's terrifying, but it shouldn't be, and here's why. Because the world around you is dealing with the same stuff. I watch it all the time. I see it in the lives of people in my own congregation. I see it in my own life. That when I say out loud, this is hard for me, I'm having a hard time, the folks around me go, me too. I hear that. And then they pay attention. If you're on a journey right now, and I think you are, if you're in process trying to rediscover, reinvent, like, like reconnect with God, the folks around you would really benefit from hearing that from you. It might free them to set out on their own journey and enter into their own process. So one, make a list of the people you want to pray for and tell them that you're praying for them. Two, talk publicly about your journey, your practice of prayer. That might just be like a couple people. It might just be your, your spouse, your, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. It might be your best friend, your dorm roommate. Like it, don't, it might just be something super small. It also might be like on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or wherever you spend time online and you start sharing online about your journey and your practice. But sharing this publicly, here's a funny story, is actually how this whole thing started. When I started writing the prayers that became the first book in this series, that it ultimately led to the second book in this series, I started doing it because I needed a place, I needed a way to actually work out my own prayer life. The language I was using, it just wasn't clicking with me. The ways I'd been taught to pray, the ways, like the ruts I was in, all the language ruts, I wasn't connecting. So I started writing these prayers and I realized like, I, this would probably be, maybe be beneficial for other people to watch someone who's like, I'm a pastor. I'm like, I'm in front of people talking about Jesus all the time, spiritual things all the time. Maybe it might be helpful for someone in my position and in my practice be like, I'm trying to figure it out. And folks resonated with it. That's how this started, which is kind of how I want to end it. This whole journey this whole process for you, yeah, it is. It really is. It, it's like it, God wants to connect with you, which is where it starts. And so I want you to try out some stuff and figure out what works for you in your life. And you're going to deal with some of your obstacles and figure out some of those are invitations. And ultimately, yeah, it's, it's to some degree about you, but you are not your own. You're just not your own. You belong to your neighbor. You belong to your family, your friends. And so as a person of prayer, even your prayer life, is not your own. It belongs to you and can be a gift to the folks around you. So learn to practice that. Make a list. Who are you gonna be praying for? Tell them about it. And then invite some people into this process they might, that they might not just share it with you, but also benefit. And just like always, message me. How's that going? How did they respond when they told you, when you said, hey, I'm praying for you? Who said, please don't? <laughs> it's gonna be a real short list. <laughs> it won't be a list. Uh, and then what's it look like? How's it feel to share publicly th that with, with another person or on Facebook or uh, elsewhere that you're in the practice of reinventing and rediscovering your prayer life? Let me know how that's going. Let's have a conversation.